back to my uh, my channel. My name is Bobby. As you can see here, here is my GitHub profile. My real name is Robert, but I go by Bobby. So yeah. Um, as you could also see, my um, I specialize in full stack web development. That really means front end and back end. And I'll I'll, I'll be going over some uh, computer science stuff too. I'm sure in the future. So if that's your type of thing, uh, you know, just stick around with the channel. Um, I'm sure I'll be posting a decent amount because I this is how I learn too. So a little bit about myself. Um, I live here in Charlotte, North Carolina, but I was actually born in New Jersey. I am one of seven. I have four sisters and two other brothers, and I'm the oldest of all the boys. So I've always had some kind of sense of needing to do something big to take care of uh, my family, whether or not I've showed it, this is just what I've realized in my time, you know, growing up and realizing who I am, what I am, so, um, that's a little bit about myself, I have big plans, uh, for myself, and, uh, it would be really nice to watch these all unfold in front of me, so, the video today is going to be about authentication on the server, and connecting it to the server and then the database but we're gonna go over the whole spiel today alright so let's open up um, VS Code and we already have most of the project set up already we're just going to go over it from the beginning and see where we are and what we have to do next alright so this is the package.json you should know by now because I've told you in the first video to create this uh, you're gonna have to do npm init dash y so why don't we bring up the terminal and we will see okay so npm init y that means initialize and that brings up this next thing that we're gonna have to do is bring in some dependencies so we can do npm um, i express you could say install or i doesn't matter as long as your npm is up to date and then we could add some middleware like morgan or helmet no comma so these last two are just middleware they're not really essential they just add functionality okay we're going to be going over this pretty fast because uh this is all from the old project okay so as you can see we have a couple more dependencies than we usually have that's from authentication so let's move on uh, you cannot forget that you have to change the scripts to say server nodemon index.js and you get nodemon by you could say npm i nodemon dash d and that makes it a dev dependency allows it to work better nodemon automatically refreshes your server so you don't have to and it just ties it all together so while while you're still inside of package.json you want to create your index.js and your server.js okay so add these to the list of uh, the steps that you should do if you want to make a whole backend so don't forget everything inside this package.json and create an index.js and server.js you could do that by right clicking here new file or new folder I should say or file or you could say touch oops didn't mean to do that let's just forget that happened you could say touch and then index.js and that creates the file um, depending whether or not you're at the root directory or not so that's just another git command easy okay so why don't we go over to index.js here you're always gonna have the same couple things depending on whether or not you're in uh, uh, development mode in this case we are so you're gonna have const server const port and this function server.listen it just console logs a customizable message that you'll see here in the console this one says server is listening on the port port is going to say 8001 and I like to add a, another little spiel of uh, motivation towards the end uh, Elon Musk is the guy I look, to, look up to 
um, he's just really crazy and um, I want to be like him one day uh, creating software selling that software uh, turning that into my next career so we'll see what happens Elon Musk hire me if you can thanks all right moving on you go to server.js and it's gonna look like a lot of code here but don't worry all this is gonna be um, added later on so we could actually just comment that out now all that we're left is um, the middleware that we had Morgan and helmet and the Express Express is pretty much the language that we're using uh, the framework I should say and con server you're just creating um, the server by invoking Express and here we're going to set up our middleware this actually is uh, for later on we have helmet morgan express.json this is setting up the user to use json and these are just middlewares that allow add functionality to when you get some request method calls and then here we're setting up a couple of routers so we could spread out the the um, the weight of all the requests instead of having them all inside server.js we can make a couple routers and uh, route the, the request to the specific endpoint oh actually it's here here is where we're going to route it with this specific endpoint and it's going to send it to this router so not too much stuff going on here so we could just bring all this stuff back run the server and make sure nothing is broken So we do that by npm run server. Make sure you spell it correctly, or else you will have problems. Looks good. So that's my customizable message that we saw inside of index.js. Great. So we have this endpoint that we want to test. You set it up by saying server.get, that's the uh, request method. This endpoint, rec and res, arrow function, and then send back the status of 200, which means OK. In the JSON format, uh, send an object saying API is up. We could test that by saying that in the URL bar and it'll say API is up. Pretty easy stuff. You could set all this up in a matter of 10 minutes and I've done it um, very quickly in the past. So don't worry about it too much. The hard part is when we start with authentication but even that becomes easy at some point. All right, so after this, we're going to want to let this server run on the left-hand side. So we, have to, we want to open up another terminal on the right-hand side and we're going to shift into database mode. So that's going to allow us to create a database to store data and then re uh, request it later on. So we can do that by saying npm add connects and SQLite. Those are going to save it as dependencies. And then you're going to press enter. I'm not going to press enter because I've already done it. We could say npm install dash g connects. And pretty much this saves connects uh, globally, so we could use it throughout the whole project. Great. So after you do that, of course you're going to press enter. In my case, I'm not, but the next step is going to be connects init. Simple as that. Connects init means connects initialize, and that's going to create a connects file where we're going to add some of our database configuration. You're going to press enter and then this file is going to pop up on the left. Open it by clicking on it. Great. So we're just going to update this file with our configuration settings. Uh, okay, so uh, we're going to have a couple different things here. Development and production. There's going to be one more uh, called staging. I just deleted it, got rid of it. Production looks like this, but we're not really going to use it too much yet. Development is what we're going to be focusing on. 
We can set up the client by saying SQLite 3, use null as default. This is essential to SQLite. The connection, which is the name of the database, we can customize it by deleting that and renaming it to whatever we want to. We have to add the pool object, which allows our seeds to run without uh, any problem. And then we set up our migration directory along with our seed directory. Pretty much a folder inside data with these two, as you can see, um, migrations and seeds. Migrations and seeds. And we'll talk more about migrations and seeds in just a minute. Okay, so once you have all this set up, we're going to want to move over to our data-config. And this is going to act as the bridge, as you can see right there. The bridge allows us to connect to the database that we referenced in the config.development, or I should say .development, in the connects file, because we're setting up config, which is the connects file .development, and we can look at it right here this object, the whole piece. So we're just building a bridge to that and exporting it. Okay, so at this point we're going to move on to um, some connects commands that are going to create some uh, database schema. Schema is pretty much the plan of the database, so you create it and uh, code it out to your liking. So if we do that by saying connects migrate, colon, make, and then whatever we want to name it, it really doesn't matter. We can name it hot dog um, or something semantic such as the name of the actual uh, table that we're going to create. So we could say table data, oops. And then once we make that, you press enter, it'll create a migration because we set it up in the connects file uh, right here. It'll create a migration and send it to a, the migrations folder where we create the table or the actual database. Yours will be empty. I will make it empty so we can see. It'll look like that. But after creating the schema, it'll look like that. This is a very small database. It allows us to create a uh, database of users that has an ID, a username, a password, and whatever department they live in, or work in, I should say, such as sales or administration, HR, whatever it be it may be okay so we're just going over this pretty fast because I covered all this in my last video but for this video we're going over the whole back end okay so whatever we make in the up we have to make in the down so that if we mess up we can't just edit it and then resubmit it we have to actually um, say connects migrate rollback and that's pretty much like undoing and for this to work we have to put the name of the table which is users inside of the down function and then we could edit it as we please and then resubmit it but initially we have to submit it so let's submit it Connects, migrate, latest. When you press enter, it's going to create the database inside of SQLite. And I'll show you how to get there. So imagine you just pressed enter. And we want to open up SQLite. OK, so. This actually is giving me a little bit of a problem because I clicked something uh, before. Well, wow. 
Okay, um, so SQLite Studio, it's a little bit annoying when this happens. Um, I was actually looking for... I was looking for the left-hand side where all of our uh, databases would be, but I think this is just fine for now. Interesting. Okay, well, our database is going to pop up in SQLite, and we could just, um, actually, for the sake of this video, I'm going to try to figure this out. So this is debugging. In the past two videos, we have also debugged, and I will always restate that um, debugging makes you a better coder. Okay, um, I say the analogy a lot that sh um, calm oceans do not make great sailors. Okay, so we want to face our problems head on so that in the future we know the solution. Simple, but it's actually the hardest thing you can do. Face your problems. That's why so many people, you know, don't get past level one and um, they're hurting. So let's debug a little bit. Let's open. SQLite back up. Okay, it's looking very empty. Let's say, oh, well, actually, there we go. We face our problems head on. Um, okay, so here's our database, and we could see the users section table um, and here we go our database schema it's our structure inside SQLite so ID username password and department and there's some data and I'll show you how to add data to the database okay so yeah that's debugging so face your problems and now I won't forget how to um, fix my user interface problem right there okay so to make some data, we want to create a seed. A seed is real or fake data that fills up your database that allows you to, you know, um, test if it's working. Okay. So to do that, we could say connects seed colon make. I like to num number mine. Users data. This uh, this whole section could be anything. It could say hot dog, banana, it doesn't matter. But just make it semantic. So you press enter, and that's going to make a seed file. And then you're going to go in here and say whatever the table you want to fill up with. In this case, users. Take out this word delete and replace it with truncate. Delete whatever they give you here and fill it up with, it, with your own data. In my case, it's going to be an object of a couple different key value pairs. Username, password, and department. And I'll show you the data. Okay. Username, password, and department. And this is some data that I inputted myself afterwards with authentication. That's why it looks like that. But number one is Bobby G, Bobby G, and admin. And you can see here it says Bobby G, Bobby G, and admin. Simple as that. Don't go too crazy. This is the easy part, the seeds. Okay, so the next thing that you're going to do is connects, seed, run, pound sign, aka hashtag, and that's going to save all your seeds. Alright? You press enter, and it's going to say, okay, we just filled up your database. And then you could just check on it and see what happens. Don't forget to refresh by right clicking and then refresh all database schemas. Easy enough. Okay. So, next thing is that we want to actually get the data from the database to make sure it's working. We could do that by going over to server and setting up some routers. So anything to do with the users, we want to put in like a user router or 
anything that needs to um, take some tokens or authentication we're going to send to the auth router such as login, register, and uh, log out. But if we just want to see the data we can just send it to the normal router. Okay, and then you can just declare what your endpoint is. That's going to send it to user router. Okay, so let's open up the user router and we'll see what's in it. Okay, so here's the user router. It's simply one thing. We're declaring router, declaring the, the database helpers, the, fun the uh, function helper functions that we call DB for easy access, and then a function to get all the users. But where it, where is this function? Hmm, interesting. So we want to actually separate the functions from the actual request methods. Um, and we can do that by creating helper functions. So let me just pull up uh, the router again. Get rid of some stuff. Okay. So as you can see here, we're, we're using the get all method, get all, and we're, which we're exporting here. And this is just some SQL uh, that's translated into connects, saying return all the users from the data or return everything select all from the users table inside the database imported from the data config file you could just go back a couple minutes and find out what that looked like so we create the get all function which is just returning all the users and then exporting it importing it and using it simple as that so why don't we look at how that looks like when we get all. So this is Postman. Okay. And Postman allows us to use some request methods without, you know, going crazy. Or, you know, it's a very simple tool. Another tool you could use is Insomnia. Okay. Well, here is the request method up here. We could say localhost 8000 slash API slash users. Because check this out. If we um, say API slash users, if we just want to hit that endpoint, we could just call it a slash right here, the, the root. Okay, so let's do it. Oops. Ready? Send. Okay, well, this is some authentication that I set up and I forgot about. So. Don't worry about this right now. We're going to look at it in a second. I'm just going to log in. Great. Now let's go get this data. There we go. Pretty cool, huh? We get the login, register, log out, all that good stuff. I'm going to log out. Don't worry about that for a sec. Great. As you can see, I have no other VS Code tabs open. That's how we do. Great. So we have the user router, and now we have to figure out how to log in. Because if we want to actually access stuff using authentication, we're going to need some authentication. All right. So the next step would be to consider working on your auth router. Okay. So let's close that and look in our auth folder and set up mm, I guess we could set it up here okay so we're gonna spend some time on this section so get your notes ready or, or code along with me okay great so in this file Let's make it as big as possible because we're still going to need some of these functions. So let's just scroll down to register. Register is right here. Okay. So we're using a post method to the endpoint slash register, rec and res always, and then a normal function. Okay. 
So we're declaring that the request body is going to have to be a username, password, and department. And this is setting up how many times the password is going to hash. And th then this is like the hash um, method. Okay. Now let's not get let's not get ahead of ourselves. We have to import and download slash install this uh, library. Okay. So we could do that by saying npm i or install b crypt js. Okay. So you're going to press enter and that's going to allow you to use some of these hashing methods. Hashing is pretty much taking your password and hashing it and turning it into a string of symbols and numbers and everything. It's not hackable if you hash enough, but if you just encrypt, it can be hacked because encryption is a two-way street and hashing is like putting it into a blender. You, you're not getting that back. So you're going to press enter on that. And you're just going to bring it up here. Bcrypt. Require the, the library. Great. So just focus on these couple. So this is a router, so we're going to have to just bring in the normal stuff. Const router, const db, which is just the helper functions that we could access over here. I'm actually going to zoom in. Oh, wow. That's pretty bad. I just control Z. I hold everything down. Interesting. Okay, so we're just going to use some a version control, source control also. This allows you to undo the mistakes that you just committed. So we're going to discard our changes. Yeah. And everything should be back to normal. That's debugging 101 with Bobby. All right. Employers, see what I did there? Many people can't do that. Back to where we are. The register. So we just imported the bcrypt uh, the helper functions and we set up the router and then we export the router down there okay right. so we're gonna go to register we're setting up that that's there how many times we're gonna hash it and then we left off here const hash equals bcrypt dot hash sync password and rounds rounds is gonna equal eight and password is the password we send in so we're gonna hash the password we send in eight times the recommended times I believe the hash is 14 but just do what you do all right let's make this a little bit bigger all right so we're gonna use the add user function from over here passing in a user we're now we're passing in an object of all the good stuff username password hashed and department then we're gonna create an instance of the user Send back the status code 200 JSON formatted to say user. And that's how you register. Um, and if there's a problem, you always want to label your console logs and then send an error back. And if there's a big problem, res.status500, which is an internal ser server error, and you could just uh, JSON format an error message saying sorry. So, why don't we move on, and I'll show you how to how that looks. So you can register. Um, I will use someone I know. Who can I pick? I'll pick my friend Dale. Dale Godfrey. Password. I'm going to say mountains, because he likes to ski. And his department, I will say, 
green room. I think he likes the color green. I'm not sure why. So let's register. All right. We can press send, and it will return um, the ID of the user created. Okay. So if we get the users that we initially had, we can see that. Oh, well, we have to log in. So now is a great time to actually log in, create the login functionality. All right, so we're going to say router.post, the same thing as the top one. But this one's going to be slash login, rec res, and the function body, of course. So we're going to declare that username and password is the request body, because all you need to log in is a username and password. We're going to use the find by function that we that we made over here. And then it's going to create an instance of a user that we uh, destructured a little bit to see exactly what we wanted. And then it's going to say if the user and the password that we hashed, or I should say the password that we hashed and the password that's trying to log in, if they match create a token create a session and log them in saying hello welcome alright so let's try to log in as Dale and then we can go over some of this code okay so here we're going to log in I'm going to say Dale Godfrey password mountains because he likes to ski send there we go welcome Dale Godfrey here's your, your session and your cookie um, user ID username and then the token because we are uh, requesting to see all this stuff and I'll show you that right now okay so we're sending back this welcome message the session and token. Okay, you might be asking, um, Bobby, what's the session and token? I'll tell you. So the token is what you get when you log in to actually verify that you're uh, who you say you are, and it cannot be ma manipulated, or else there will be errors, and you can't log in. It's pretty much like your identity when you create an account and then log in. So when we log in and everything works out, we're going to set the word token, const token equals um, create token function, which is actually up here. And there's a couple of different things that um, go into this, the payload, secret, and options. Payload is going to be the subject, username, and role. Uh, this is actually depending on however you set up your database we have department user dot department okay and um, then we set up a secret which is actually set up in the environment but we could say or if there's no environment we could just use a string and then options we could just say that your token expires in one day so then you could just log in once and um, be signed in for a long time. So you don't have to worry about logging out. And then we're just going to return um, JWT, which is a, a library, and I'll tell you about that in a second. Dot sign, payload, secret, and options. So as long as you have this, you'll be able to create a token. So you, you might be wondering, what is JWT and how does that affect what I need? So JWT is JSON Web Token, and that allows you to create a token pretty much. It's just a library you have to install, or else you're not going to get anywhere. Okay, so we have this create token function, and then once you log in, it'll create a token, and that's what you saw over here. To verify who, if you are, who you say you are. Great. 
try logging one more time. Alright, well, fair enough. So let's talk about session. There's a lot that goes into the session. It's a little bit involved. But has to be done. So the session is uh, stuff about the user, okay? And its limitations. Uh, we'll get into it. So the first step would be npm i or install express session. You're gonna press enter, and then head head on over to server.js, and that's what we saw over here. So you're gonna just in um, bring it in con session equals require express session and then you're going to install this library too connect session store just adds a it finishes what you need in here and then you're gonna pass it session okay the next thing you're gonna do is create a session config object variable and you're going to pass it these specific uh, properties. Name, secret, cookie, object, uh, resave, false, save, uninitialized, true, uh, store, new connect store. And this is one of them. These are two of the most important. <clears throat> Excuse me. So DB connection and create table true. This has to be true because it'll create a session table inside of your database will, which will allow users to actually log in. And this is just uh, the connection which is the data config which I'll show you this time. Um, we actually covered it. It's three lines. It's the bridge. Pause the video if you're uh, if this is too fast. Okay, so we create this uh, session, these couple things, and then we uh, use it globally. Uh, Server.use, which means it's a global middleware session, and then you pass it session config, which is this big, pro um, this big object. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, as long as you get it, but everyone has to learn somewhere. I, uh, I had to learn all this somehow, and I never realized I'd be able to do this, so you can too. Alright, so we have all this stuff now. Let's move back over to Auth Router. And then here we're going to look for the session. Okay. So uh, we're going to want to just create what the session is after we. Uh, Nope, we don't have to bring it in. We're just going to create what the session is and then send it back in the 200 JSON uh, response. Uh, here it is, J uh, session, rec.session. And then we're also going to send the token. Uh, I'll show you these two right here. Here's the token. the session when it expires uh, let's see I think I set it to a time okay so when you actually log in this will pop up because we're actually sending it back with the 200 status code great now let's work on the logout because you c if you can't log out, then you're trapped, and that's a problem. So it could be actually anything. It could be router.post, but I like to keep it with the vibe, and we could say router.delete slash logout is the endpoint. Uh, rec res arrow function, and then body. This is saying if rec.session exists, then rec.session.destroy pretty much saying destroy destroy the session 
but this one's going to actually send um, uh, we're gonna check if there's an error so if error say that you couldn't log out for some reason it'll say um, you cannot log out else send back a 204 which is uh, terminated and dot end else terminated dot end which is what we're getting because we have the session and it's ending and there's no error so it's going to the else it's a lot of stuff but if you just watch it and try to understand what it actually is then you shouldn't have a problem so let's log out there's no body, none, there's no params, nothing like that. So, delete, and uh, there's just an indication of something happened actually here to 204. It says, the server successfully processed the request, but it's not returning any content. Not a problem, we just logged out. Great. Well, we're about 41 minutes in. Not a problem. So, the biggest authentication things that you're going to have to think about are the token, the session, and the cookie. Cookie stores data about you and doesn't forget for a specific amount of time. So, if you look something up, it you know it'll help you out and point you in the direction that you looked last making it feel more uh, tailored to you all right great so let's see we successfully finished the okay we finished the um, auth router and the user router now the only thing left that we didn't talk about is this requires auth middleware. Okay. So this is saying that if you're not logged in, actually guys, let's stop right here for a second. This is the last thing that we're gonna talk about, so um, don't get too tired. Videos video is almost over. I know coding is very tiring, but I'm I'm going step by step, so this is how you build the back end and then this is how you finish it. Okay? This is the finishing part. This is a requires auth middleware. And you can see we import it from requires auth. So let's look for it. Auth, uh, let's close everything. Great. Oops. Okay. So it's in the auth folder. And we clicked on it. Requires auth. It's the very last thing, guys. I mean, um, I didn't lie to you. Uh, this is middleware to, to check if you're logged in. So for every middleware, we're gonna want to say rec, res, and next. Next is the only addition that we have. Arrow function and then the function body, saying if we have a session, send to the um, router. I'll actually open it side by side. Okay, let's look at it logically. So we're trying to access the um, uh, slash API slash users to maybe get a list of all our users. So the first thing it hits after here, it's the requires auth middleware saying if a rec dot session, pretty much the user, if this exists, next, bonk sends it all on over to the user router which is actually right there sends it on over to whatever function it wants to hit next depending on the endpoint else if you're not logged in if this does not exist at your given time it'll send back a 401 json formatted message if you're not logged in bro we could say we could have it say whatever we want we could say, please log in before trying to access the users. Let's just keep it like that. Let's not get too crazy. Okay, 
since it's the last thing we're just going to check all right so the surfer is still running a little bit motivation and let's see what happens so let's just make sure we're logged out that we have no session and let's try to get this uh, let's try to get the whole list of users please log in before trying to access the users <laughs> guys I think we did it all right so let's try to log in to Dale Godfrey's profile okay so it gave us a token the session and the cookie details let's actually try to log in and or let's try to get the users now now that we're logged in so um, in the requires auth it's gonna check if we have a session which I think we do and if we do next it's gonna send it on over to the user router where it could hit whatever endpoint it wants to hit in our case there is no other slash we could put it but it's it still means just that let's put it for vis uh, visual reasons send boom we have data guys we did it we created a whole back end in 45 minutes with me talking for one minute in the beginning we did it 45 minutes not too not too shabby if you could possess the skill you will be very uh, marketable in the future and my goal is to really be noticed by uh, believe it or not Elon Musk because he is the man um, and I just want to work with him maybe work on Neuralink or something so yeah okay so as you can see here um, all we did, <laughs> all we did, was create the package dot JSON, change stuff, add stuff, move on, create that, create that. Okay, and then we moved on and we created some migrations, and then we then we added some C data. Okay. And then we moved back to server.js to make sure our routers are set up. And then we moved on to the user router, which then we had to create some helper functions. Let's see, get all, get all exported correctly. Okay, and then we moved on to the auth router, which is our second router. Still using the same uh, helper functions on the right hand side to log in, oh, uh, register, log in, log out. And then we, or in the middle of all this good stuff, we downloaded a couple libraries, bcrypt and, or bcrypt.js and json web token. And then we created a create token function. And we, uh, to register, we don't really need too much, just the bcrypt library. But to log in, we have to actually go back to server.js, um, download this library, express session, and then this library, connect session dash connects, uh, create the session variable, create the connect session store variable, then pass it session, and then create the session config object. And then after creating all that, we're going to set it set it globally to the server passing it session and then passing session session config I'm talking fast because we're just going over it okay great so after do, uh, doing that we go back to the routers that we were working on auth router and we set up the session to be returned back to us and the token which we set up um, in the create token and then invoking it great see how it highlights boom boom and then to log out, we just created this function, which uh, just destroys the session if it exists. If there's an error, it'll, it'll tear up, tell us. Great. And then after that, we uh, added some new functionality, requires auth. Where is that? Requires auth. Uh, we're saying if there, if there is a rec session dot user, next. Next, as in it passes it to user router, which then it could hit whatever endpoint it wants to hit. 
after that we saw if it worked which let's see uh, yep we made him we can log in which we just did get the uh, user data we're getting tired of this so we log out get the data doesn't work boom guys thank you for watching um, it's been 50 minutes and 54 seconds on my recording um, so yeah pretty impressive how we set up the whole back end with authentication um, and everything and database work so you guys should be proud of yourself um, yeah so follow me on github um, this is my Instagram I guess you can follow me and subscribe to me here on YouTube because I'm going to be doing stuff like this hopefully often helps me so yep my name is Robert Mark Gondola I specialize in full stack web development hire me Elon Musk please I will help you with Neuralink and that's it work hard guys and never give up this way you never fail alright bye